What's going on? We are live in New York City. Good morning, if you're with us live. It's Kevin Kenny. This is the Build Series, and our guest today has a brand new album entitled Dreamers Do out this Friday, February 7th. Please give it up for Kat Edmondson. Thank you. We did just about half the interview before we went live just now, Kat. Yeah, we had a great talk. Well, because you you, uh, you live here in Brooklyn, and you made the record in Brooklyn. We'll dive deeper into that, oh, those two facts, but uh, it's becoming more and more rare to talk to an artist that actually lives in New York City. I guess so. But but as, as you said that before, I I actually have a, a strong community that I of Which artists. Is, it's awesome. Yeah, so cool to hear. What actually prompted the move? Because uh, you started out doing kind of like the uh, the gig circuit in Austin, Texas, mm-hmm. and then at a certain point you moved to New York City. What was that decision uh, based on? Well, I'd always wanted to live in New York, and um, I grew up watching old movies and and like Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers and. Frank Sinatra, and everybody comes to New York, you know, and um, and so there was just this fantasy that I'd always had that that I would one day too do that. And also, um, the music that I learned in my childhood was the Great American Songbook, which was born here. It was it was written here, and um, and so there's a certain culture and and community, if you will, that uh, dearly loves and knows the Great American Songbook, and so I. I guess I kind of came to find my people. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a funny thing with like ideas or goals or, or you know fantasizing about something when you actually meet it in reality. Sometimes it can live live up to it, and sometimes it it can kind of disappoint you. How was New York initially? Did it live up to all of your wildest oh, dreams? Yeah. Yeah. The honeymoon period was very long. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Is it still going? <laughs> Occasionally. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I think I'm officially a New Yorker now. I, oh, oh yeah, entirely. There's, there's if you make an album in New York, I think you get like a key to the city or something. Sure, and I've made three now in New York. Yeah, not too bad. Your last album, um, it was so cool, the approach where you, you thought of it as a movie first, uh-huh. I think. Mm-hmm. Um, and we'll get into the origin of this uh, story, but this, this sort of... Um, Focus on film and how important film is and how much that inspires you musically is really interesting. I don't know if I've talked to another artist that uh, has that love of cinema that then can lead into making music. Where does that come from? Just these movies you grew up watching? Yeah, the movies that I grew up watching. I, you know, <laughs> a childlike rationale is uh, very sweet and naive. And so uh, what I came to understand what show business was at a, at a young age was being in a film and singing and dancing and acting. Doing it all. Doing it all. Yeah. And, um, but of course I was watching movies from like the thirties and the forties, you know? So, um, I didn't know that that was different from then or now, like contemporary times. I didn't know that th- things would be any different. Um, not every movie is a musical anymore. That's, that was like a bygone thing, but, uh, I was just prepared to do all of that, and um, and so I guess that's just like my early understanding always coming through. I'm also an actress, and so I I see like scenes and visual images, and I when I'm singing a song or writing one, I'm I'm embodying the the character, either of you know the character that I'm imagining or the sentiment that I was strongly feeling when I was writing it. You hear other people's voices when you write music, right? Uh huh. That's so interesting too. <laughs> That's just always been the case. I don't know how other people do it. But yeah, it's always been the case. I mean, I'll hear like, like a famous artist. Yeah. You know, like give me some examples. Oh, uh, like Nancy Wilson's voice, or Nat King Cole's voice, or um, uh, um, Elvis Presley's voice, or you know, it's it's like I I just hear someone who's quite familiar to us and then and they're singing to me in a particular style which dictates a particular kind of production i mean it's all very indicative of how the song is going to come out yeah this affinity that you have for uh, another time were you where have you ever tried to break that down or retrace those steps in the, in the sense of like like were you allowed to watch modern movies as i was or? yeah okay. and i did but you just more gravitated towards the older stuff yeah why do you think that was? I don't know. People say old soul, you know. You never thought you like you've never thought about like, you know, what did you like about that that maybe you don't connect with or resonate with in the modern day? No, I think I think it might be as simple as that was the first stuff that I watched and Yeah. You know, you hear like rock and roll artists and they're like, "Oh, I was, you know, I was tr- I was 
I saw all the girls were, were going for the guys with the guitars, and so I went for it. You so know, you're and, Jagger? Yeah, I don't know who it is, but it's like some British rockers. But yeah. but it's like, you know, it seems like you're always chasing the thing that inspired you in the very beginning. Yeah, and I think that's so important to be able to tap into and have access to as an artist. Sort of that, like, openness that a that child has or that, you know, that uh, desire to learn or that desire to dream, which is a really nice segue into the origin of this album. Sure. Um, but how important is that for you to be able to kind of still be able to reach back and touch that sort of, like, childhood innocence, maybe? Wonder, maybe a better word. Oh, it's, it's where everything inside of me comes from, so it's essential. Yeah. And there was a time, uh, not too, I mean, pretty recently, where you actually felt like maybe you were, um, you had outgrown dreaming. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, time goes by, and um, and the music industry is, as everyone knows, I think, not for the faint of heart. And, um, and, and when one pursues a career as an artist, uh, it's easy to find all of a sudden your work is supposed to be a means for something else, uh, which it's, it's like a means for a profit or a means for promotion or a means for something, you know, outside of the work itself, uh, which is you never create initially from a place of trying to get something. And that's not where creativity comes from. So I, um, finding myself in, in that kind of circumstance where my work was expected to to turn into fame or fortune or what have you that's I I I started losing sight of of what it is to dream and 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 what that means um and I and I actually through the making of this record learned something very important and it's ineffable so I, I'll try to explain it but um there's a there's a quiet power in merely having a dream and I don't think uh, much else needs to happen ap apart from that. Like, there's a lot born from just the existence of a dream. Yeah, totally. That's what this record is about. And that's really where it all began, right? When you had that moment of uh, maybe doubt, uh, to put it in simpler terms. Mm -hmm. And then what you did, I understand, is you kind of you went back to square one and you revisited all these old bodies of work that first inspired you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and a lot of them were old Disney movies. Right. From like the 1950s. Is it entirely Disney songs, or is it is it like um, there's the mostly Disney songs. There's a couple of songs that I've written. Okay. Um, one of the songs was actually um, uh, the reason why I started exploring all this material. It's a song called "Too Late to Dream." It's kind of the focal point of the record, and it's asking, "Is it too late to dream?" And the rest of the record kind of answers that question. Um, but then there are also a couple of. Um, Songs from the Great American Songbook. Like, there's a tune from Singing in the Rain called All I Do is Dream of You. Right. What uh, Disney songs are on the uh, album? Um, Second Star to the Right from Peter Pan. Cool. In a World of My Own from Alice in Wonderland. Very Good Advice from Alice in Wonderland. When You Wish Upon a Star from Pinocchio. Um, a Dream is a Wish Your Heart Makes from Cinderella. That's awesome. Um, a uh, review that I read for the new album from the Associated Press that I have to imagine is like the highest praise for you is that it sounds like an alternative soundtrack to like an Audrey Hepburn film. Have you read that? Yeah, that's really nice. Yeah, I mean, is that is it? Do you do you is that a high accomplishment? Is it just for your love of cinema? If yes. if a body of work can sound like it could also soundtrack a film? Absolutely, because then I I feel like people, what it is that I'm trying to do is is getting across to people. Yeah. It's 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 a it's a funny thing when you get glowing reviews from the press on bodies of work if they necessarily line up with with how you view the work how you view your career. I was reading like NPR really commended your uh, growth as a songwriter over the past decade. Have you felt that you've grown exponentially? Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. What what do you think has like led to that? Oh, the fact that I've done it more and more. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. It's like it's just it's just, it's just a muscle. Practice you're working makes it. perfect. Do you feel like you're a more honest songwriter now than maybe you were ten years ago, or where is yeah. that growth located? Yeah, maybe so. But I mean, certainly when I started out, um, I started writing when I was. It was before the age of nine. My first memory is writing a, like a country song at the age of nine, um, but uh, I, I guess you know when you're young and you want to like be appreciated or, or be cool with your peers, you write certain things 
so you know people will like you. Ever go through that though? Did you ever want to be cool with your peers? I feel like definitely. Really? Yeah, I've really abandoned that now. I've I've finally seen that that doesn't work for me. I just have to be completely uncool. (laughs) (laughs) No, but how does that sort of um, reconcile with like this love of like another time? I feel like that is just such like a abstract like you know independent spirit uh interest uh but you actually you you would try to sort of uh hang with the cool kids yeah and i think i succeeded to a certain extent but yeah but there's a point at which you just have to be you i mean i never told my friends about the music that i was into Right. And I never really shared what movies I was watching, you know? I was checking out what they were checking out. I was listening right. to pop music, but but I wasn't loving it as much as the other stuff. Totally. How do you get better as a songwriter? Like, do you, is it something that um, over time, like, you... I mean, is it is it really as simple as just doing it more and more? Or is there is there certain elements of the process that you need to focus on from album to album? I think it's important to listen to other songwriters and, and notice what it is that they're doing. Um, for me, actually, it's it's hard to even explain. Like, I don't think I could teach a class on songwriting because I, I would spend the entire time just encouraging people to get in touch with their inner inner selves, their inner child, their inner spirit, you know, and it would be this very abstract kind of emotional thing because I've always been able to do it. It's just it's just a talent that yeah. I've that I have. Well, when you were very young, uh, when you would go through things, I've heard you would write a song, you wouldn't necessarily journal or would you, I mean, would you write a song before maybe even confiding in a friend? Yeah. Oh, wow. Interesting. So songs in a way are a companion to you. For uh-huh. a long they're, time. they are cathartic and they're also illuminating about whatever it is that I'm am processing that I might not even realize, you know, I'll just suddenly f- hear a melody and, and maybe have a few words or feel a rhythm. And and actually, it will tell me a lot about where I am and, and what it is that's going on. And then it'll help me go through it, whatever it is. Yeah. the uh, It seems like this the process of making this album began with that question, right? Is it too late to dream? Have I outgrown dreaming? What was the final answer from going through the entire album-making process that you found? I really want to leave that open. Okay. I really do. I- except to say that that um, the important thing is is that is that essential quiet power that we have from merely having the dream. To expect anything more of it um, isn't necessary. It's that it's that very peaceful place of just being in touch with the dream. Right. Somehow from finding that through making this, it's finding like a stillness. Um, I realized that I was fine and the, and the doubt was irrelevant. Right. And maybe putting the value in the pursuit or the, you know, the having of the dream, the necessarily the dream coming true. Yeah. The having of the dream rather than even the pursuit of it. I think just living in that space of, of having a dream is completely satisfying. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, we're going to kick it to the, your fans here in a second. I do want to uh, talk about tour, though, because you uh, it's a very, very large tour. You're doing a bunch of, actually, multiple shows here in New York City. Um, and it kicks off, I think, in New Mexico uh-huh. in February. Well, we are in February. This year's flying by. Right. Look at me over here. Uh, February 13th, I want to say, is the first tour. That's right. Tour. The Lindsay Theater in Santa Fe. That's awesome. So what can you tell us about tour? I love touring. I can't wait to meet my audiences and share with them all of this new material and when I play and I perform, it's a great opportunity to, um, I love to just get really intimate with the crowd and tell stories and laugh and and the band is phenomenal. Yeah. It's one of my favorite things to do. That's awesome. Are you an artist that you find you learn a lot from being on the road? Because you've toured with so many great acts from Lyle Lovett to Sean Colvin. And, mm-hmm. or, or is it more about, is it not necessarily like a learning uh, experience? Oh, sure. I've learned a lot about, like, the technical aspects of touring, and especially touring with major acts. Um, I've been able to see the inner workings of everyone's operation, and everyone actually does it differently. So yeah. that was something important that I learned. Um, and I do it differently than everyone I ever toured with. Um, but I learn what's important to me and what's not important, the things that 
that are superfluous to worry about. You know, it's it's. Um, I've learned to get rid of those very quickly because it's it's unnecessary to suffer on the road. It's already a really challenging oh, thing yeah. to do, just traveling constantly. So challenging. Yeah. Totally. Uh, let's get to the first fan question, actually, here. Okay. Because it's going to come from right here. Hi. Hi. You're so great at redefining classics. So I was wondering, like, what's your deconstruction of, like, a song when you start? Like, how do you go through that process of making it pay homage to the original while also making it your own? Thank you. Sense. Yeah. I don't reconstruct it. If I did that... Um, then it would imply that there's an obstacle to begin with. So I can't even approach it that way. Uh I go from the place of the songwriter and what they intended when they wrote the song. So when you wish upon a star, for instance, a lot of people would be intimidated to tackle that song. And and I would too, except I, I thought about what the song was really saying and and what I could offer that sentiment. So I, I just I just go all the way back to the bones from the beginning and ignore whatever came, you know, Sweet. into everyone's consciousness. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. That's a great question. We have time for one more. It'll come from over here. Hi, Kat. Hi. Um, so I'm so intrigued by how you found inspiration from the past, but are there any things in the modern day that you feel like you draw inspiration from yeah and all the time um when you say things <laughs> what do you mean um I guess noticing that the period that you're drawing so much inspiration from is so drastically different from now are there any echoes that you see in the present kind of like the past repeating itself that you just come across in your life and Still. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, I mean, I definitely, I think um, the past is always repeating itself. And we, like, it's constantly in conversation now in society about the crazy times we're living in. But, um, I mean, I think if you look exactly like 100 years ago during, like, Prohibition, it was it was insane back then. So I think, um, yeah. But as far as things that inspire me now... I wrote a song, for instance, called Old Fashioned Gal, and it's all about, um, like, just how we live in a, in a digital age now, and everything is online, and there are all of these interfaces in order to connect with one another, and how strange that is um, when we could just sit across from one another and connect. So uh, I, I'm often bringing in contemporary themes to my music, because I don't want it to sound like I'm trying to dress up in, in a time that I was inspired by. I I just want, um, it's not even a want. Like, I think my influences come through me, but I'm definitely a woman of the time. That's a great question. Do you ever, uh, you know, I want your opinion on this before we go, is... um. That's a great song, that old, old uh, fashioned gal mm-hmm. song. And you talk about just like sort of the overconnectivity, arguably, that is, you know, our modern world. Do you ever think that this will, instead of this just being the new way humans are going to communicate for the rest of the time, that it's uniquely this generation? And like, because every generation seems to reject and rebel against the previous generation's values and, and, and lifestyles. Uh, can you see a future where, like, maybe who's ever after Gen Z just, like, totally rebels against social media? I can't because I feel like the momentum is so strong now. And and it's, like, if it's there, it's it's just going to get used. Like, the technology now is just such that I don't think people can resist it. But I do – I wouldn't be surprised at all if there was a really strong movement yeah. away from it. I mean, there is sort of one already. But I think – you know, it, it could probably grow. Yeah. Interesting stuff. Uh, tour dates, as we mentioned, are online right now, and tickets are also available. Where can we check both uh, those things out? CatEdmondson.com. Nice and simple. Yeah. I love it. Guys, one more time for Cat. Cat.